What's up guys, That Racing Game Guy here. Um, I recently had to replace the battery in my car and my radio is not working, music is not working. So um, basically, I have to take it apart just to check the fuse on the back of the radio. So I figured it would make a cool little vlog about how to, how to do this, how to take a radio out of a Mustang. So I'm gonna like get my little toolkit out here and kind of get started. I'm doing it right here in the parking garage at school. Ain't even care. I'll probably get some funny looks later, get yik yacked about, but it's all cool. Got my handy dandy little cheap toolkit here, but it works. It works quite well actually. All right. So first things first, you gotta take this little shifter bezel here off. So I'm gonna get my handy dandy little, I guess I'll use this one that was the smallest, if I can get it out of there. There we go. Handy dandy little flathead screwdriver and kinda just take that off very, very carefully. So basically, I'm just gonna pry that off real quick and I'll be right back. Basically, you got my car charger in here and everything. Basically, you take these screws off and this entire piece just kind of pops off. So real quick, I'm just gonna go ahead and get those screws out of there. I don't think I'll need my little flathead anymore. So actually, I may want to use this one. Let me see here. Nope, that's too big. The struggle of finding the right tool. Alrighty, let's try this one. <laughs> ah, geez. Gotta love drop tools, right? There we go, that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those screws out real quick. Now that I got those screws out of there, I can lift this entire piece off. Now the fun part is getting it over the shifter and the e-brake. Helps to have the e-brake up. So, as my hand slips off of it, I may actually need to set my camera down, ah geez, to do this so I don't scratch anything. So, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna take this off real quick. With that piece off, I have all of this kind of just open and exposed. Now, basically, since I have a touchscreen radio and it plays DVDs and everything, uh, there's a bit more wiring. I had to wire it into my parking brake, which was right here. This wire. This wire goes to the stereo, and then it gets wired into the, the grounding wire for the e-brake right here, which is that, if you can see it, that red wire. That's where that goes, so it just kind of gets spliced in there and taped up. Um, that's some extra wiring. But basically the next step is, and you can see where I smashed my thumb in my car door, but I did that a few weeks ago. But you just kinda pop these pieces out. There we go. As I struggle to get a hold of it, you just pop these pieces out. They literally just snap on with these little things, these little clips. So once you take those off, you take these six bolts out, and that's the fun part because then you have to unplug this stuff. There's two on either side for this, I think one for this, and then there's one on this side and one on this side for this stuff. But yeah, so that's the fun part. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and take these bolts out and then I can show you how to unplug this stuff. Now with this piece out, or those bolts out I should say, they're seven millimeter bolts. Um, this little piece, you just kind of bend it back just slightly and get it over this piece on the dash. I went ahead and did that because I need both hands to do it. But if I can get my little light here out of my little bag this thing comes in handy big time 
super bright LEDs. Okay, and it does that, so it can stand up. Basically, there is this that you have to unplug, and it's quite hard, you have to pull this down. I usually, or I should say, I always have to use a screwdriver to do it. So, I'm gonna get my screwdriver, of course. And if I can do this one-handed. And this part I definitely cannot do with one hand. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug this and then I'll cut back in and show you guys the other side. Okay, so I decided that unplugging stuff was pretty straightforward. Basically, there's just a little lever. There's a tab blocking lever. You got to push it in, just flip the lever down and it unplugs. This stuff I have not done yet but it too just unplugs even with one hand. This one is a little bit tricky. This one, you gotta push this little tab in here and unplug that. If I can get it, which I can't with one hand, so. Okay, so that dash panel gave me a little bit of difficulty with that thing sticking out there. But I just was, I was able to uh, take it out with no problem. The next step is going to be to take, I believe it's also the seven millimeter. I really want to say it's also the seven millimeter. So I'm going to take this here and it is also seven millimeter. So I'm going to take those out real quick and that's the final step and taking the stereo out. Usually what I do is I take that and just kind of stick it in there to keep it up and out of the way. So I'll be back in a second. Now with that out, the radio is free to move around. As you see, I kind of had to break these little pegs off to fit it back there. Have my wire right there for my little microphone for my Bluetooth calling and This is kind of my moment of truth, whether I see if the fuse is blown or not. These are all my wires. Basically, this is the easiest thing in the world. Basically, you buy a radio, you buy a wiring harness for the make and model. This is the from the original radio on the car. This is the wiring harness that, that's aftermarket. This is the harness that comes with the radio. You just wire them together, pair colors. It's extremely simple, extremely simple. So this is all my other wiring, subwoofer wire. So I'm gonna get that fuse out real quick. So it wasn't the fuse in the radio. I'm kind of upset that it wasn't because now I'm really all out of ideas. I gotta fix this wiring now. My little EL wire from HavocLighting.com. Really awesome night effect. But putting it back together is really just as straightforward as taking it apart. You just go in reverse order. But, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Really, this is the steps that you take in installing pretty much any aftermarket radio in any car. Mustangs are actually a little bit more difficult compared to most things. Um, so if you're looking at installing an aftermarket radio in your car, it's probably easier than this. And if you don't get, uh, they call this a double din. You know, this little ones are a single din, big ones are a double din. But if you're looking at installing it in your car, if you get a single din, there'll be less wires to connect. Like you won't have that parking brake wire to connect and probably won't have Bluetooth calling. But yeah and your dash will probably be easier to take apart than this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little vlog, little kind of tutorial-ish kind of thing. Um, if you did, leave me a thumbs up, comment down below on what you think. Don't forget to subscribe to That Racing Game Guy for more awesome vlogs and gaming. Thank you guys for watching.